morning everybody um, pardon the jerky video um, I'm actually holding it in my hand probably shouldn't do that but I wanted to get this out two things first please pray for um, uh, Lisa Boyce she is has been admitted in the hospital for the, uh, the virus and Anyway, probably many of you are who are her subs, you know that already, but I just wanted to put that out there. And then also, I wanted to just throw out a uh, something that my husband and I watched uh, a DVD some t uh, about a week ago. It's called Before the Wrath. And if you haven't seen this, I would encourage you to look it up because it's talking about how when Jesus talked about the wedding and the bridegroom coming for his bride in the middle of the night, he was being very specific to a Galilee wedding. Um, the, the, the weddings in Galilee were even different than the general population of Israel because the they were a surprise. They were always a surprise. The wedding, uh, the, the bride would get ready um, you know, he, she would have been engaged to the, the bridegroom. He would offer a cup, actually, just like Jesus did during the, the last Passover. He was with his disciples. And if she drank from it, then she was accepting his proposal. And then he would go away with the father, you know, with his father and prepare a place for her, which was actually attached to the father's house. And she didn't know when he was going to come back to take her to his father's house and have the wedding feast. So she would just prepare herself and she would actually uh, sleep in her bridal garments. And the, the groom, he didn't know either. It was totally up to the father. And he, you know, the father would tell him to go get his bride. And you've heard that part. But the thing about it is, is that he would go in the middle of the night. I mean, it would be in the middle of the night a lot of times where the father would, would uh, wake his son up and say, hey, go get your bride. And anyway, this was, we've heard about this. We've heard um, Pastor Tim talk about the, um, the bride and, and other people, the Jewish wedding, everything. But the thing of it is that this, this whole um, part of secrecy and and all that, it was specific to the Galilean wedding. The other thing about it was that when the, bride, when the bridegroom came for his bride, she would actually sit on, it was kind of like a, um, they would lift her up. She was actually carried to the wedding feast. And it was, she was lifted up. There are so many amazing things about it that speak of the rapture and the bride. Um, and also, I was trying to put out an article I got from the Times of Israel, and you probably know about this too, um, how this Passover, which is this evening, which is already starting, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has ordered all Israelis to stay inside. They are to shut themselves in. They are not to go out. And I was thinking how amazing that is because that is what the original Passover was. Um, the The Israelites were, were to stay inside their homes because the death angel was going to go by and they had the blood on their, on their door frame. Um, now, we also know that right now Israel is not looking for their true Messiah as a whole. There are those that do are believers. But as a whole, they we know that they are about to enter the time of Jacob's trouble when they embrace the Antichrist unknowingly, unwittingly, but because they have been blinded at this time, they will receive the wrong person. But we also know that this is going to be the time where God will deal with his people. And this is what I often tell, you know, what I want to tell people when, they're, when they think that the church is going to be in the tribulation. No, the purpose of the tribulation is not for the church. It's not 
for the purpose of the church to bring in the harvest even. God is going to use his people. He is going to deal with his people, the Jews, and they are going to be a light to the nations as he called them to be in the first place because he is going to work in them to see. It is a promise kept and, and as hard as it's going to be, it is still because he loves them, because he is going to use them as his light. 144,000 witnesses will be all Jews from each tribe. And I don't even, I, there's so much happening right now. And I know everybody is standing on tiptoe, holding their breath. Anyone who's a watchman, anyone who's watching, and I know that, that the Father will send Jesus at the perfect time. But I just want to be honest. I have, ever since I was a child, when, since I've been saved, I've been looking for his return. And emotionally, I am spent almost. And I know that when it happens, I will be just so elated. But right now, physically and emotionally, I am, I'm tired. I think it would be awesome if he came tonight at midnight, the midnight cry, you know, Passover, the bride, all that. I would just be so thrilled. But I'm almost not putting a lot of hope in that because I have looked for so long. And I know he will come. I know that. But um, it's hard waiting. It really is. And... I think of that last, one of the last phrases in Revelation where it says, the spirit and the bride say, come, come Lord Jesus. I think he has orchestrated things the way they are right now to cause us to long for his appearing, to really long for his appearing. Those of us that are watching and paying attention. Um, so. I know we're all holding our breath. Maranatha. Have a blessed day.